Now, in this session, we are going to discuss four different terminologies which are very much uh, common in deadlock discussion. One is the deadlock prevention, another one is the deadlock avoidance, deadlock detection and deadlock recovery. You might be, uh, might be feeling that these terms are very much common, common means uh, very much alike, but they are not alike, they are having different meaning in our chapter deadlock. So, deadlock prevention, let us suppose uh, my exam score can be bad for three different reasons. Reason number one, my preparation was not good. Reason number two, um, out of syllabus questions came. Uh, reason number three, I was ill on that particular date of my exam. So now, there are three causes for which I can have a poor score in one of the semester papers. Good. I cannot resolve all of them. Let me resolve at least one of them. So, let us, let us take the preparation, solid preparation let us take. That means, what I am doing? I am doing the preventive measure. I am taking one vaccine to resist myself getting affected from one of the diseases, not from all diseases. So, that is what is what you are taking, preventive measures. So, what is, what is deadlock prevention? There are four necessary, four conditions are there, necessary conditions are there for the occurrence of deadlock. So, one is mutual exclusion, another one is hold and wait, another one is no preemption, another one is circular wait. Let me solve any one of them, so that for that very particular cause, the deadlock situation is not going to take place. If it is so, if we can take and if we can have the solution for each and every, each and every necessary condition for the occurrence of deadlock, then that is coming under the uh, head deadlock prevention. Deadlock avoidance. I must be having the prior database that how many resources are there and how many instances per resources, how many processes are there and which process will require which resources for how many instances, how many instances are remaining available, how many instances per resource have got allocated already. If we have this particular database in prior, then next time, then in the succeeding time, the resource allocation to the processes can be done in such a nice way that so, so that the deadlock situation will not occur. That will be coming under the deadlock avoidance. And next one is your, I am written read this one twice. So, next one will be will be your deadlock detection. So, now what is deadlock detection? Deadlock detection means a system progress has got postponed. A system progress has got postponed. Now, what is the reason? Due to the deadlock or due to the live lock? So, we are having two locks, deadlock and live lock. So, what is the live lock? Say, live lock means a process has got uh, suspended and it is waiting for some favorable event to take place and that is known as the live lock. Let us suppose the backup process will be initiated after 5 pm. So, if it is so, I can call it as a live lock. If at 11 am, I am finding that the backup process is not executing, but it is actually waiting for a favorable event, that is the clock will say, yes, now it is 5 pm, now go on executing. So, in those cases, we are having the term called live lock. So, in that case also, the progress of that process will get postponed or suspended. But in case of deadlock detection, I shall have to check, is the progress has got suspended only the occurrence of deadlock? So, deadlock detection will detect that one. And what about the deadlock recovery? If deadlock detection detects that really a deadlock has occurred, then a recovery routine will be initiated by the operating system to retrieve the system from the deadlock situation and that is known as the deadlock recovery. So, deadlock prevention eliminating at least one of the causes and finding causes, uh, finding solution for all these causes and then deadlock avoidance having the prior database regarding the allocation, regarding the availability and so on, so that I can go for the further allocation in a very nice way. Deadlock detection, the system progress has got postponed, is it really for deadlock? Deadlock recovery, deadlock detection has said yes, deadlock has occurred. Now, deadlock recovery routine will come to retrieve the system from the deadlock situation. Here, we are going to discuss deadlock prevention in this particular session. So, you know that we are having 
uh, four necessary conditions for the occurrence of deadlock. This is the direct condition and other three are known as the indirect conditions. So, mutual exclusion, hold and wait, no preemption and circular wait. If you want to have their definitions or basic meaning, you can watch our previous videos. So, now mutual exclusion, how to solve it? You see, all the resources are not non-shareable. Some of the resources can be made shareable, so that will not cause any problem to us. Let us consider one resource called printer. So, you see, say I have given some document to get printed on a printer, my colleague has given another document to get printed on a printer, another faculty has given the question paper uh, for printing on the printer on the same printer. In that case, what will happen? Say I have I give the request at first, so my document will get printed at first, then his document, then my colleague's document. Then, then what is happening? You see, printer is a non-shareable resource because at a time the printer cannot be allocated. The printer cannot be allocated to more than one processes. So, printer is a good example of non-shareable resource. But what about what about the help files? What about the read-only files? A read-only file can be allocated to multiple users. Say help file. I want to. I want. I'm using one software. I'm pressing F1. I'm getting the help. My colleague is also pressing F1 and he is supposed to get the help. My another colleague, she has pressed F1 to get the help on the screen. So, in case of read only file, I can make it shareable, no issues because none is going to write something on the file, everyone is reading from the file. So, read only file is a good example of a shareable resource. So, what about the mutual exclusion? They are telling that please categorize all the resources under two heads, shareable or not shareable. Do not make all of them non-shareable. So, that is the solution of mutual exclusion. So, when the resources will become shareable, so multiple processes, mul multiple threads can access that particular resource and they can go in parallel and concurrent. So, probability of occurrence of deadlock will get reduced. Next one is hold and wait. So, I am a process, I require R1, R2, R3. I have got R1, R2, I am waiting for R3. So, this situation will not occur. If you go for the solution of hold and wait, this situation will not occur. I am telling you what, what will happen. A process before starting should get all the resources, then only it will start the execution. That is one of the solutions. That means, the process will get R1, R2, R3 in one shot then the process will go on executing. Not like this that I have got R1, R2, let me take them, then I shall wait for R3, not, not in that way. So, I shall get R1, R2, R3 both, then I shall initiate. There is a one solution of this hold and wait. Another solution I am telling, let us suppose I am having R1, R2, I am having R1, R2, I require R3, I require an additional resources, I require R3 on my execution, I require, then release R1, R2 and place a fresh request to grant instances of R1, R2, R3 for all of them. So, that is the another solution. So, what are the two solutions? Two solutions are like this, before initiating get all the resources then initiate and during the progress if we require any additional resource then release the previously allocated resources, take all the resources in, uh, resources in one shot and then proceed. So, there are two solutions in hold and wait but both the solutions are having some problems. Let us suppose that is a particular process which will read something from the tape drive and data will be kept in the memory, shorting will be done in the memory and the shorted data will get printed on a printer, done. So, when if we follow the first policy that means, I shall take tape drive, I shall take memory, I shall take printer in one shot, then I shall execute, then what will happen? Magnetic tape is a, is a sequentially accessible storage. So, it is very slow to read. So, reading lots of data from the tape drive, putting it in the memory, shorting the data in the memory, during this period of time the printer is sitting idle. idle. In the second phase, when I am getting the printer to get printed my shorted data, my tape drive is remaining idle. So, if you take all the resources prior before execution, then some of the resources in the first phase, in the second phase the tape drive is unutilized. So, some of the resources will remain unutilized. So, utilization of the resource will be very poor 
might be poured in those cases. Okay. Now, so what is the solution? At first I shall take the tape drive and the memory, then I shall read, I shall short, then I shall release all of them, then I shall, I shall request for memory and the printer, then I shall do the printing. That is very good one, very good solution because whatever the, whatever the resources I am occupying, I am utilizing, I am utilizing them. So, whatever resources I am occupying, I am utilizing them. So, that is a good one. But can you ensure that when I shall release this memory and this particular tape drive and next time when I shall go for this memory and this printer, the file will remain there intact. There will be no other process coming and deleting my shorted file. Can you ensure the completion of the process successfully? So, this is the main problem here. And another problem is that let us suppose I am a process. Let us suppose I am a process and I am demanding a very popular common resources. So, 3 to 4 such resources which are very much common and popular required by multiple processes for their execution. Then what will happen? As those resources are on high demand, so I might be having a long waiting time and this is known as starvation. This is known as starvation. So, that is another problem of this hold and wait. So, obviously, you should go in an optimum way. Next one is no preemption. I shall not release any resource prior completion. Okay, that is good enough. Now, see, let us suppose a process is requesting for a particular resource. Then at first, the operating system will check whether the resource is available in the resource pool or not. If it is available, it will be allocated. Done. But if it is not uh, available, then it will check is there any other process waiting for other resources and occupying that very resource which was demanded by this process? If it is so, then I shall preempt that resource from that waiting process and that will be given to this particular process so that the process can get execution. So, this is known as no preemption. So, I can take away the operating, operating system will have the priority to take, will have the permission to take one resource away from a particular waiting process for a new requesting process. So, that is known as the no preemption solution. Next one is circular weight. So, you know circular weight, n number of processes are there P0, P1, dot 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 Pn, P0 is holding a resource being required by P1, P1 is holding a resource being re required by um, P2 and P n minus 1 is holding a resource which is being required by P0. So, that was my circular weight condition. Now, this solution they are telling okay, that is a medicine shop. Okay, that is a medicine shop. So, I am going to the shop to I am having some throat problem. So, I need to purchase some uh, or should I some chocolates or something for the for my throat lozenges. Okay. So, now another person has come, he has come late than me, but that person is in emergency because he is requiring to purchase some saline. What is the common policy in the queue management in a shop, medicine shop, there is a first come first serve. Should I get my, get my lozenges at first or should, I, should the shopkeeper give the attention to that particular person who is in emergency to purchase saline for the very, uh, very emergency patient. Then he will be getting the priority at first rather than myself. That means, saline is having the priority higher than that lozenges. So, whenever that high priority resource has been demanded by this particular process, so this process priority has got enhanced and as I am requesting a very low priority process, so that low priority of the process has got assigned to me and my priority has got decreased. So, same in this, in this way, the circular weight condition will be resolved. I am not getting, I am just giving you one example. So, say priority of tape drive is higher than the priority of the printer. Do not think that it is 10 means higher and 1 means less, <laughs> do not think. If you, are, you are, if, you, if you are having rank 1 in the class and if you are having rank 10 in the class means which one? You are the good student when you are having the rank 1 in the class, having the priority higher in the class. Okay. So, now let us suppose I have done enough job today, so let me close my office. What should I do? Should I take the printout of my document or should I put the I should keep the keep the backup of my document on the tape drive. Tell me, obviously I should take the backup on the tape drive at first. Print printing I shall take tomorrow also. I can I can take after one week. That is no issues. 
So printed will have the priority lesser than tape and this drive, disk drive is having priority higher than printer and lesser than this, this tape. So what is happening? Happening like your logins and that saline, you are allocating priorities to the resources. So whatever the processes are coming, if they are demanding higher priority resources, then the priority of the process will get enhanced and obviously in that case, the circular weight, that circular chain will, will, be, will be broken. So there will be no circular weight for which the deadlock may take place. So that is the condition to resolve this circular weight condition. So we have discussed mutual exclusion, please do not make all the resources non-shareable. There are some resources inherently they are shareable. Hold and wait, get all the resources then start, no preemption. Are you demanding any resource? Let me check whether it is available or not. If it is not available, is, it, is that resource available to any other waiting process? Take the resource from that waiting process and get it allocated to you. And circular weight, please allocate priorities on the resources and processes demanding higher priority resources will incur, will inherit higher priorities. So circular weight, the chaining will be broken. So this, this is known as deadlock prevention. So I am solving my necessary conditions. I think you have got the logic. Thanks for watching. Watch my next videos.